Alrighty, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of The Coach's Corner. Obviously, it's Todd Pierce here again. And look, on today's episode, we've got one of our super amazing students. Her name is Mel. Mel's been doing coaching now for some time. And what she does is she actually helps ladies who feel like something's kind of missing in their lives to really get back that sense of meaning and fulfillment, which is obviously a super important thing, I think, for anybody's lives. Um, but Mel, it's, it's awesome to have you here. How are you doing today? Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> look, obviously, we're rocking the virtual one at the moment, but that's all cool. So uh, look, tell me, tell me, tell me about you. I'm not going to go into much detail about your story. You can share that yourself. But like, mm. what has brought you to this point right here? Obviously, for those that are watching, what's brought you here? What's the story? And I guess what's made you, I guess, you know, set that passion inside for you to actually want to help ladies get that meaning and fulfillment back in their lives? Mm. So, um, being Asian, um, I come from a background that's very heavily um, geared towards family and all of the things, people pleasing, like status, money. And I did, I found myself living life for everybody else but me. Um, and then I came to a point where I woke up and I didn't know what I wanted, who I was, what made me happy. Um, I found myself bankrupt, highly depressed, mm. and um, just afraid and scared and didn't know what I wanted to do. And I always believed that there was more. There was more to life. There was more to what I needed to do. And I found Tony Robbins. And then I decided that I wanted to help myself. So I wanted to understand what you know, like how to let go of my past, how to let go of my pain, understand me better, my behaviors better. And here I am, like I fell in love with coaching and being able to like help people see and be their own best friend um, and stop being everybody else's cheerleader and be their own cheerleader. Um, yeah, so I've hit rock bottom multiple times, but I still believe that everything happens for you and not to you. And I can look back at everything and see how it's shaped me to be the person and the woman I am today. Um, and, you know, hold incredible space for the women that need it to feel safe because, you know, like feeling safety is a, I feel like a critical thing to be able to heal and um, find yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Well, obviously, you know, Tony Robbins is um, one of those forces <laughs> of nature that kind of uh, bring a lot of people into the personal development world or more so that he kind of stands out and, and helps a lot of people. Mm. But, you know, what, what I found quite interesting right there, obviously, you know, cultural, culturally, right, there are obviously different, I guess, family uh, expectations and obligations that exist on a cultural level. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, like, you know, you, you help women specifically. So do you find that like, you know, the women that you've worked with and, and the issues that they have that, you know, family dynamics do often play a big part in regards to how you can start to feel lost. Yeah, 100%. Like, you know, we don't, we don't come here on earth and it's like, oh, I am just a mum, a sister, a daughter, a friend, a colleague, you know, like, and along the ways we have so many different hats and especially with family, it's like, but who are you besides being a mum? Mm. who are you besides being a daughter and being able to meet everybody else's needs like your worth is not determined by the way you treat other people mm. and how happy you can make them and then it's like you know we often try to as you know like um family makers we try to make everybody else feel happy and then our happiness is dependent on their happiness and it's like so when is time for you and i feel like with the women i've worked with they want to scale it back and realize that it comes back down to like loving themselves and that they are enough, even if they say no to other people and have those healthy boundaries and say no and honor themselves. Mm. And they can give back so much more as well. Absolutely. So what were the, um, I guess, you know, on your journey here, right? You've had a number of mm. problems and things like that. Like what were the things that you learned about yourself? What were the things that kind of, pushed you to start to evolve inside and, and grow as a person do you think first of all it was really um honoring my boundaries like really trusting inside my body when it felt like a no and that I felt bad or guilty or shameful for wanting anything for me mm -hmm. and I realized it's totally okay and more than an okay because when I'm happy 
it actually ripples effects into everybody else. And I took ownership for my life. I stopped being the victim. I stopped blaming my family for where I was at and um, the problems that I had and the goals I hadn't achieved. Like I let that happen. And then now it's like, I wouldn't be so resilient. I look back and I was like, I went through all of those things because it taught me how to be resilient. It taught me to never give up. It taught me how to be resourceful. Um, And I really flipped it from being the victim and blaming everybody else to being in complete ownership for my life and what the part I played into how I got here. Mm. And it was really taking my power back and feeling that and not feeling powerless and lost. Yep. Mm. I, I, I often say that, right? Like a big, a big part of changing our lives is no matter how hard it is, right? Because obviously, you know, sometimes there are things that are really, really bad that happen to us. Um, and, and sometimes things happen that are completely outside of our control. And as you know, I've done coaching now for a decade and I've seen a lot of different people over the years. And it's, it's not uncommon to come across people where it actually feels good to place blame outside of ourselves, right? To, to mm-hmm. agree, there's, there's, there's an element of, I don't know what you'll call it, but like there's this, like, this element of when we push it outside of ourselves, it's like, well, this isn't my fault. Therefore Mm. I shouldn't have to take the responsibility. But Mm -hmm. ultimately as coaches, we know that's, that's ultimately completely disempowering, but like when you're able to take ownership and this can be very, very challenging depending on your circumstances, when you're, Mm -hmm. when you're able to take complete ownership of the, your creation in your own chaos, that's where big things start to happen. Right. Yeah, 100%. So I find a lot of the times, going back to what you said, it's almost like, well, if I don't have anybody else to blame, it's just myself now. And that's scary when you know that everything happens in your life is a direct reflection of your actions and your choices that you've made in every single moment. So what when, you know, with the women that I work with, when we go back and have a look at their story, their past and the things that have happened to them, and we can mine their story for gold and the wins and their strengths through that, they flip it. It's like empowering. They feel, they look back and they're like, oh, I never saw it like that. Oh, I didn't notice that, you know, my strength today, um, it came from that situation. And you know, like it's taught them so many things now. So like moving forward, they don't have to be afraid that they'll ever be in that situation again. And they feel so empowered leaving, you know, and it's less scary. It's like, well, if I've been able to do it before, I've been able to get myself out of that situation and I can see the things that have happened and are good for me. It's life is less scary. Mm. And sometimes people need that little extra push, right? And obviously as a coach, you'd know this, like sometimes when you're in the problem, like, Mm by its very nature of, of, of having a problem, like if you're inside the thinking of the problem, you can't actually see outside the problem. So sometimes, mm-hmm. as you said, like, and I've had this before, I've had very, very intelligent people that I've worked with. Yeah. And like, they're so smart yet. They're not able to get perspective on their problem. Mm. It's kind of what we're talking about too, right? Like it's, it comes down to that perspective. How are you choosing to see things around you? You know, is it, is it the start of something or the end of something? Is this scary or is this potentially exciting? And yeah. you have to shift those perspectives. hundred percent. And a lot of the times when it's happened so long and it's like generational, like family and stuff like that, it's a recurring pattern and it's like a behavior and they don't know how to get themselves out of that mm-hmm. as well. They don't know how to look, they don't know how to like stop what's happening. They don't know how to fulfill their needs any differently. Mm. It's like what they've been taught when they grow up and they see how people interact as they believe that's all true. But, you know, when we're younger, we, all of our beliefs are formed by the time we're zero to seven. And it's like, I explain it as where, think of our human body as like a computer program. If you bought a computer and you didn't update the software every, like, even our mobile phones that we use every single day, Mm -hmm. every, like, couple of months it starts to break down it starts to get slow it starts to get viruses the same thing happens to our body and our minds when we don't upgrade our thinking and our beliefs and our values we start to see problems manifesting externally in our lives and the same thing's happening and when we don't learn 
what we need to from a situation, it keeps happening. It's like a tennis ball. You hit it on the wall and <laughs> if you don't learn, it just keeps bouncing back at you. <laughs> yeah, nice. Before. And, you know, if we, if we come back to the, the, the big thing that you're helping women with, right, which is obviously they're mm-hmm. feeling like, uh, a, a, like a sense that something's missing, they're feeling lost, there's mm-hmm. an absence of direction, there's an absence of meaning and fulfillment. Like, you know, the, the, the key things for that, like um, I'd love to hear your opinion in a second. Like for me, when I think about that, like, you know, a lot of the time, as you just said, right, like most people don't realize that we are to a large degree, there's biological factors that impact how we behave. And there's uh-huh. also conditional based, uh, I guess, condition based uh, behavior. So we've been conditioned by certain behaviors by people around us between zero to seven, seven to 14, different age brackets there, right? And like the question is, when do we ever stop to kind of take a look inside and say, hang on, well, is this me? Like, is this uh-huh. me or is this just my family or my, my, the people I hung around or what I watched on TV? Like, am I actually being me or am I being something that I've been conditioned to be? So what do you feel is like the, the, the big factors that kind of rob women of their sense of meaning and fulfillment? Well, uh, that's exactly what I do in the fulfillment pathways. We have a look and we take an audit of exactly what is their beliefs and what are their values and not. And I believe it's when women start to let go and shed the layers and the beliefs and the truths that they believe are really theirs um, and create space for what they really want. Um, Like stop hustling and stop trying to meet needs and stop, you know, it's not like we become complacent when we don't strive for more, but it's really being in love with who they are right now, the person that they've become and allowing themselves to create and play and explore and have fun every day not just when they have time is when they bring the meaning back into their lives when we life is not just about the next dollar the next goal when we can get married when we can have children when we get that you know pay rise it's about being able to like oh I'm really interested. It's like a childlike curiosity is when we were younger, if you were interested in something, you would go and explore it. Um, And as adults, we don't really create time for fun anymore. It's like a leisure thing. Um, And when we create this space to play, like for me, I love cooking. So when I cook, I feel like lost in time. Like I thoroughly enjoy it. It just makes me feel happy. Mm -hmm. And it, there's no end goal to the food. It's just me getting my hands messy playing. And that brings me fulfillment. That brings me meaning when I, yeah. Well, it's interesting that, you know, it's funny that you said, you know, there's no end goal when it comes to um, cooking. And like straight away for me, what I hear when you say that is that there's an absence of masculine energy. And it's like, it's because for me, masculine energy is very goal oriented right it's like you're moving towards mm-hmm. an outcome there needs to be an outcome often my wife and i we sometimes don't have disagreements but i'm, I'm very <laughs> outcome oriented right and like sometimes she just wants to talk and doesn't go anywhere and so like i need to catch myself and remember i say okay todd is your wife wanting to have an outcome right now or just have an open conversation and because I'm mm. hyper masculine in my energy. Um, and like, I do very much think in outcome. So I, I, I find it interesting. The, the, the connection between, you know, meaning and fulfillment for keeping it in context, you know, with, with women and mm-hmm. how much they play on both sides of the spectrum, because obviously those, those watching may or may not know you can be masculine in your energy and you can be feminine and you can, you can go between them. So what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's really being able to release the control and the outcomes Mm -hmm. and behaving in ways that feel good for yourself. And being in flow for me is really getting, like tapping back into what feels good, not what you think and should, but really what feels good in your body. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not a mother myself, but I know when women have children, they feel really fulfilled and their life has a lot of meaning. And it's like, what is that emotion in your body that you are looking for? Mm-hmm. It's like when we have a goal, the end goal is to give us an emotion. Like when we hit our goals, we'll feel successful. It's like, how can you feel successful today without achieving a goal? It's like, how can you feel happy today without expectations of how it should be or you can only achieve something to feel happy it's like what can you do get your body moving like paint draw knit whatever it is that makes you feel like to dance right i love (laughs) to dance (laughs) 
Yeah. So um, I'm really big on embodied movement because um, I believe that not all emotions can be expressed through words. Yeah. So for me, um, yeah, we dance into different themes and different um, emotions and we really just get tapped back into the body. So for me, it's like, for an instance, one of the themes that we um, dance into at my workshop is shedding layers. Yeah. So it's like, you know, like you close your eyes and you, like, you feel into your body and you ask it, how would you like to move? You know, like how, if you were to see the emotion in your body, how will it, like you'd move so that the emotion moves out of your body. Yeah. And it's like, what are you shedding today? How can you create more space? And it's like, I'm yelling at these ladies while they're moving. And then you can just see their body starts expanding and the lightness lift on their face. Cause it's not heavy anymore. It's not about perfect. It's about expression. That's really cool. I love mm. that. Um, yeah. I've got, I've got the, the dance ability of a robot. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's not about perfection. It is about expression. <laughs> I'm no, I'm no Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good it's, it's 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 not about perfection it's about expression that's really really cool so mm. you're, obviously you you help ladies achieve the outcome of getting back in touch with their meaning and fulfillment in a very mm -hmm. specific way and you briefly touched on it before but i just want to kind of bring it up to here so we can unpack it a bit to kind of look at different parts of the journey but like mm -hmm. so your, your 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 specialized program is called the the fulfillment pathway which you mentioned before so mm -hmm. what what are the, what's the kind of journey look like as women do start to go from a place where they're maybe, you know, not as happy with their life. And, you know, obviously some of them will know why they're not happy, but some also mm -hmm. don't know why they're not happy. What's mm -hmm. that kind of journey like that you take women on as you take them through that pathway? Yeah. So we actually do it in three stages. And the first, the three stages are the freedom, fulfillment, and then fun. Yep. So in the first stage of freedom, it's about getting really clear in an audit of your life, like what's working, what's not working, um, like your values and your beliefs, are they yours, are they not yours? So we're pretty much walking around blind, you know, like um, we don't, if you don't know what's working, you don't know how to fix it. Um, and then so we have a look at that and we get really clear on that. And then the next stage is we look at, you know, the events that shaped you to be who you are right now. And we go back and we have a look at how that's impacted the choices that you make on a daily day basis. Um, we look at old evidence and beliefs that um, making them feel stuck now. Like they, they're not anybody else but this. Like they believe it to be like an absolute truth. Why, um, why is that important in the journey? <laughs> it is super important because – when you feel stuck, you don't feel like your life is fulfilled. Um, when you let past experiences shape who you are today, it limits you from having the belief that you can achieve anything more. Mm. Um, and it blocks you from feeling like your life has any meaning when you don't believe you can or you shouldn't or that it's too difficult. Um, and then we have a look at the identities and the beliefs that they have taken on and what we can let go of, mm -hmm. like freedom from your past to really step into and um, create space for the woman that they truly are without the noise from everybody else telling them it should be this way or society's values and beliefs, but who are they and what makes them happy is more than enough. And obviously that's a super important thing. That first kind of that that first stage of that journey, because as you said, it's getting freedom from everything that, that may have been everything mm -hmm. that's been projected onto you. And obviously mm -hmm based on our experience as coaches, we know that when you grow out of sync with yourself, that's when you can start to feel no meaning, no purpose, no satisfaction, no fulfillment. So that first layer there that you go through that first stage is about unchaining themselves from all that stuff. Is that right? Yeah, 100%. And we go back and we have a look at all of the wins and the new beliefs that they can, that are more empowering that can move them forward. Um, but it's really about freedom from the past and letting go of all of the things that are not them, not serving them. Wicked. That's really important. So what's the next stage as you kind of go up then? So the next stage is fulfillment. And here we have a look like the big sexy dream, like their goals and their desires that yeah. are purely theirs. And we make sure that it's there. So we look at their options and the way that they can move forward. So it's like when you, it's like 
when you go to a new destination, you put it into the GPS. This is like my end goal. And, you know, the GPS, the maps will give you the way there. Go turn left, turn right. So when you are absolutely clear on what you want and your end outcome, it's like having an inner GPS to follow. So that's why we get really clear on their goals. Um, we also have a look at the in, like the what brings them meaning, what meaning is to them, like their de- definition of meaning, what's given them meaning in the past, the present, the future. And we have a look at their life mission statement. So it's like they can always refer back to this when they don't know um, – like how to make a decision or if it's right for them, if it's not, like if it's in line with their life's mission statement and their life mantra, they know that this is for them and they won't waver from that. Their boundaries won't be crossed. They won't say yes to anything that doesn't feel good for them. Therefore always finding meaning in their life, not feeling stuck. Well, that's, that's, that's something you've mentioned a couple of times now, obviously like that, that is a big issue, right? Like not enforcing our boundaries. Do you find that kind of shows up quite often with people that you work with? Yeah, 100%. So, um, and even in things of being able to voice their opinion um, or saying yes without feeling guilty or that they'll be judged or that they'll be abandoned or that but they'll be left. Mm-hmm. It's like boundaries are such a big thing in feeling whole inside your body because when you let your, and that's not just boundaries from other people, it's boundaries from yourself. Yeah. There's the behaviors from yourself and that when you let your boundaries be crossed, you are starting to chip away at your self-trust. And yeah. when you start to chip away at your self-trust, you start to lose that belief in yourself. So therefore you have self-sabotaging behaviors come in. Mm. Oh, that's gold. That's a gold bit of nugget. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then another part is we look at like really owning their power. And so it's like we have a look at what their zone of genius is. It's like what they're really good at, what comes natural to them, um, what other people believe that they're good at. So really celebrating themselves and having a clear understanding of what their, where their strengths lay and how they can utilize that in their life. Mm-hmm. And then we also tap into like, like I've brought it up before, like their childlike curiosity. Mm-hmm. What were they interested in in the past that they haven't allowed themselves the time and space to explore now? Mm-hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to make money from it and it has to be the thing that brings money in for them. It's just that growth you feel from when you learn something new, you get your hands messy. It's like exactly that childlike curiosity. Like nobody can tell you no when you're a child because you have this imagination that is so wild. And what we learn in coaching is when you can visually see what it is and believe that it's true and it's happening, your body will guide you there. Your unconscious mind will make the right decisions to lead you there. Yeah. But a lot of people, as we know, right? Like a lot of people, they, uh, and it's not their fault, but like, as we grow up, our, our curiosity, our creativity, it calcifies. Um, Mm. And like, I think a big reason why it calcifies is because of the world, right? Like mm-hmm. there's so many people that are the more than happy to, and it starts young, right? Like when you're young, you're like, oh my, my son, right? Like, you know, he's, he runs around and looks at everything. He's like, oh my God, this, what's this, what's this? And he's blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm very, very cognizant that I don't put too many uh, boundaries on his curiosity. Because, and, and he's also his creativity as well. It's like, yeah, yeah cool. if you want that to be that, then cool, we can, we, can, we can work with that. But like people start telling you at some point that that's not possible. That's not real. That's not you. You're not that kind. I had that, mm-hmm. right? I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was five. And mm-hmm. like the, as soon as that diagnosis came in, I was consistently told all the things that I could not do. And yep. like that's to calcify different parts of our thinking process, like what we think we can and can't do, what's possible, what's real, what's not real, how curious we are. You know, if you come from a very mathematical, you know, kind of very, uh, not mathematical, but more of like a, a, a highly logic based family, then that's mm-hmm. going to affect you too. Because like, if you want to be creative and draw these fancy things, and then you've got mum and dad saying that's silly, go pick up a calculator. Like all these things obviously impact us, right? So do you find that with the ladies you work with too, that they've got a lot of that conditioning affecting how they express themselves? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a lot of like, it starts in school. We get celebrated to conform and to memorize and it kills all of that. And then they really forget who they are. And a lot of the times what happens is with the women I work with, I ask them, what do you want? And they go, I don't know. 
and the I don't know comes from not believing that they're worthy enough of having it. Mm. And that comes from being told that's not right. You can't do that. That's a waste of time. And it kills the joy in your life. You know, like it really kills the fun. And it's like, if you're not having fun, what is it for? If you're constantly on this like hamster wheel of life, it starts to like eat away at you. And the women, when I work with the women and I get them to really just write down a list of all of the things that they would like to do and um, create space for it. They find it so light, so fun. Like, and it's really about prioritizing the time to have fun and explore and express you not feeling stuck. Mm, nice. That's yeah. great advice. So what's then, then obviously the, the, the final stage that you talked about was, was about that fulfillment, right? So what does that kind of look like <laughs> as you take people on that journey? So we just went through fulfillment. The last stage is fun. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. The last stage is fun and it's have a looking, um, it's like really having a look at all of as humans, we have different core needs and it's really understanding their core needs and what behaviors and actions and habits that they're doing on a daily day basis that are meeting these needs and is it good for them? And is it not good for them? Um, so it's like what completes you. And it's like, you know, as coaches, we know when a certain behavior meets three needs, it becomes an addiction. Yep. Yeah. So we have a look at the needs that and the behaviors and the patterns that are holding them back from really feeling like the, it's like, um, staying in your comfort zone and it might not be good for you because you want, you have so many goals and so many dreams, but because you're stuck in your comfort zone, because it's meeting all of your needs, you start to feel like stuck and like you don't like yourself anymore and that's not fun. <laughs> so we yeah. get really clear and we explain to them how um, they can meet these needs. And so they go like from stop self-sabotaging to se themselves to winning in life because they have their behaviors that every day moving them forward. Um, yeah. There's like an the next alignment there too, right? because like obviously, you know, you want something out here, but if you've got like this, all these needs being met at the unconscious level. And that's people's biggest issues, right? That it is often unconscious. It's their subconscious mind. That's, you mm -hmm. know, effectively the, the behavior generator. And if you've got those needs that are getting met there, then it is very hard to consciously kind of change something, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. 95% of our thoughts are unconscious. Only 5% are conscious. So it's like, how do we create the new neural pathways and make it easy for them? Um, even bringing their awareness to these things, it could just be like, oh, you know, like I'm just relaxing. How often are you relaxing? And then how often are you saying, I don't have time? Mm. You know, it's like bringing that accountability back in as well and letting them know how much power they have over their time and what they can do with it. Yep. Nice. There's like a lot of people like our parents and they're like, oh, moms are like, I don't have time because I have to do all of these things. It's like, no, let's actually have a look at how much time you have and how you're spending it, you know? Um, and the next bit is like really living the dream. So we create a thing called like the dream 100 list. <laughs> um, but it's all about the fun and creativity and really romanticizing their life in every aspect. It's like a living a really pleasurable life. It's like, how can you make a cup of coffee and it be the most fun thing you do? Yeah. You know, like, um, and really who do you have to be? What are the things you need to do in order to have the life and the meaning and the fulfillment that you truly desire in every day without having to achieve any big goal? You know, like every day it's possible. And like, that's what we do. So it's like life stops being a fantasy and you actually fantasize about your life every single day. <laughs> um, and then, so the last thing is really rewarding themselves, really celebrating themselves. But the last week is probably my funnest because they pick a thing from their dream 100 list that they probably didn't think was possible and they live it out every single day. Yeah. They create the space for it. They stretch themselves. They keep people accountable and they have a whole supportive group of women that are doing the same and celebrating them and um, it being okay. It gets to be messy. It gets to be fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just expression um, and really being accepted for who they are without the, you know, the fears of judgments for not being accepted. Um, and that's when, you know, a lot of the people might be like, you know, like I have a good family, I have good friends, I have a good job. And I just feel like something's missing, mm. you know, and it's like no, nothing else out there is going to fill that void for you but yourself. And I've been getting them to tap back into 
what is it that they haven't let themselves do? Right. Mm. So there's like, so there's obviously a, 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 a big element of it is obviously letting go of everything mm-hmm. that necessarily wasn't you to begin with, but yep. you've kind of been conditioned to be. Um, and then it's about, I guess, uncovering what you love doing and then also letting yourself do that, right? Having that fun. That's really cool. That's a nice journey. Yeah. Um, and living it, like breathing it every single day, like celebrating every part of you and bringing an awareness to it without judgment. Yeah, nice. Mm. Really, really cool. Yeah. I love that. So I hope that's been valuable for those that have actually kind of got, gone through that all there now. Now, in respect to, I guess, you know, because I'm just being cognizant of time, with, um, with if, if you were to give like, you know, three big tips to, 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 to women that are out there, right, that have got, I guess, issues currently with, you know, not feeling fulfilled, lacking meaning, feeling that life isn't where they want it to be. If you kind of need to see, you know, give some real red hot tips, what would you kind of give those ladies? The first one is to take an audit of your life, every aspect of your life. Like um, people think of their life as just one, but we have different elements and different parts to their life. So it's like your relationships, your business, your career, your personal development, your health, um, and really taking an audit of their life and what are the expectations of how it should be. Mm-hmm. and then having a look at what it actually is now so that they know the gap in between of what they need to fill in order to get there. Mm-hmm. So first is bringing your awareness to it. If you don't know what about it is not working so that we can make it work. The next one is to trust yourself in your body. Um, if you're not sure, just ask yourself, is this what I want to do or is this not what I want to do? Is this going to bring me meaning and fulfillment or is it not? Um, you can actually just ask your body, what is, what does a yes feel like? Mm. And then what does a no feel like? Yeah. And let yourself guide you so that you're always doing what's good for you and not what other people are. Um, and the third one is just have fun. And like release the control of it having to be perfect or that it has to make money or that other people will understand and just, yeah, just have fun with it. Just play with it. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. Like you won't remember it in five years time. So it doesn't matter, but at least you tried and you can look back and be like, I live a really pleasurable life because I did all of the things I wanted to do. Not when I allowed myself to, because I achieved some big goal. So then now I have time. No, every day. Mm-hmm. Make time. Yeah, just make the time. Nice. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. That was a really, really good episode. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so if uh, there are ladies watching this right now that would like to reach out and um, connect with you, how can they do that? What's the best way to follow you, connect? Yeah, so the best way you can find me on um, Facebook, Mel Lu Nguyen, so M-E-L-U-N-G-U-Y-E-N. Um, and you can also do that on my Instagram, which is exactly the same. It's Mel Lu Nguyen. And I also have a Facebook group. Um, I have a link tree on my Instagram that you can just um, – add yourself from there and I will be running free women's circles in there once a week. Wicked. That's really, really cool. So yeah. um, anybody watching this that would obviously like to go and get in and obviously Mel gives a bucket load of value inside of her group. Feel free to go and do that. You can obviously get involved with those women's circles, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, but other than that, Mel, it's been really, really good. Everyone else, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've enjoyed it. I love getting extra people on and obviously conversing and finding out what they're doing, how they're helping people. So um, look, if you're a coach or anything like that, and you know, you've got some, I guess, cool journeys you take clients on, feel free to reach out, shoot me a PM. I'm always happy to have a yarn. Uh, But aside from that, you know what to do, hit like, hit subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a follow, give us a gift down below. I love gifts. I said this in the last (laughs) episode. I've been making it my mission to try and like communicate solely via gifts. So someone asks me something, I try to respond just in gifts, just for fun. But anyway, (laughs) I am the same. <laughs> Everything is just a gift. <laughs> I love that we can communicate in just gifts. <laughs> like you better have fun, right? Like people yep. are so stiff and rigid. It's like, loosen up, man. Let's just have some fun. <laughs> but anyway, let, let's wrap this up. Give this a like. Give this a share. Share if there's anybody that needs to see this. Tag people in this as well. And I'll see you in the next episode of The Coach's Corner. Take care. <laughs>